nerd dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 92 in our series, Create a Ruby Gem Nerd Dice. And in this episode, we're going to be working on creating a contributing file for our uh, anybody who's interested in contributing. Uh, a few weeks ago, we did a similar exercise on the nerddice.com Ruby on Rails project that we have that will wind up using this gem, Nerd Dice, as one of its um, items in its gem file once we get more into uh, actually developing the features of that, uh, that project. But here is an example of kind of what I did in terms of the Uh, the content of the contributing file. So outlining all the different ways that you can contribute to a project. You don't need to be a programmer in order to contribute to this project or any of our projects. Uh, feature requests, uh, bug reports, documentation are all ways that somebody can uh, contribute and add value as they're doing uh, that. Um, so essentially this is what we've got here um, and I'm going to mostly adapt this to what I do to what we're going to do on the nerd dice gem so the way I typically go about doing this is if we go into the editor here uh, or, or the, the issue there's a markdown editor here so you can take it and let's say we want um, take a look at the take the, the raw code here we can use this as a starting point and uh, use that for uh, for doing this so um, in how we do this the um, so you can have you can see here uh, anchor tags that um, have names so that you can refer to them using essentially the the ID uh, style that you would have in your uh, in HTML so that that pound sign and then um, the name of it will link right to it so um, let me see got a so here security bug security bugs here if there's no reference to a file it will take it to that uh, that name in the same file and then you can also make relative links doing those things so you can see in the nerddice.com project the security is a to do we just went in where is the security thing that we just security bugs there. Um, so that's a to do on the nerddice.com gem, but we just did that last episode in this um, nerddice.com Rails app. And then in this nerd dice gem, uh, we just did the security policy on that. So obviously um, there'll be a lot of adaptation here, uh, but generally the, um, the same overall um, items will apply and then I'll wind up changing the readme as well to refer there's a if we look in the readme now you can see there's a section on contributing but it's um, fa fairly brief so in, in that case I'll modify that contributing section to refer to the contributing file that we'll be making here. So I will pause now and I have that on the other item. All right, paste it back in again and I'll pause and adapt this and proofread it, make sure that I'm not referring to nerddice.com when I'm supposed to be referring to nerd dice the gem and um, anything notable comes up, I'll um, talk through it on the other side. All right, so I'm going to unpause now because I've started doing uh, something that uh, 
is noteworthy. So in the um, in the README, not every section has a an anchor tab tag with a name on it, and I've already started making references to that. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, say, do this, make it usage, etc., on down the line for all the rest of the uh, kind of at least um, second level headings on in the readme so that I can refer to them from the contributing um, markdown file and elsewhere. So I will continue on just making note of that. Another thing I just noticed, so always be careful when you're uh, adapting and copying and pasting and things. Uh, it turns out that in the nerddice.com uh, version of the contributing file, in every case, just about where the issues log is referred to. It's actually referring to the issues log in this uh, Nerd Dice Ruby Gem repository rather than the nerddice.com repository. So we can see here, this is on the nerddice.com. Um, open an issue is pointing to Nerd Dice, not nerddice.com. So um, that is something here we'll go in and add to the nerddice.com backlog there um, deal with that in another video on the the other project um, but kind of always be careful when you're doing something like this to make sure that you adapt it properly and that you're not referring to something in an other repository by accident like I am leaving mistakes in helps you learn all right I think I have what I'm looking for here so go to the preview I'll So right now you can see it's in nerd dice slash issues. So not, none of these links are going to work. We need to um, test those after committing to make sure they resolve correctly and click on all these things. Uh, similar functions were uh, adapted some stuff to make it more um, Look, look more specific to a Ruby gem and less about rails like the steps to reproduce section here uh, as noted the security bug section we've actually got a security um, section there so we just put that in the um, in there the code contributions are mostly the same I did note some additional stuff about um, specific to the Ruby gem here um, noted that, um, for example, running the tests that you're using, we're using RSpec here instead of mini test, which is what we're using in the Rails project. Um, and then otherwise, it's mostly the same. So. Um, what I'll do now is I will take this and copy it all. And we'll create a new file at the top level. Paste this stuff in. Save that, take a look at status here. So added a bunch of name anchor tags there. Um, 
and then at the end, so I added this code along and conduct section. Um, oh, I still need to get rid of now the above that the contributing and development parts. Let me do that. Here, development and contributing. Those sections can both be eliminated. Now, I believe I can Master, so we'll check check out get add get commit sign it and then I'm gonna do some fairly extensive clicking and testing after we do this but I'll write my commit message all right, I've got a commit message here. I will close it and we'll push to the branch. Um, I think there's a fairly high probability that I'll wind up having to omit this, amend this commit um, after um, testing and clicking on all the links and stuff, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, so we're going to push to this branch Now we'll have this available if we go to our code. And go to that branch. We should be able to do things like Make sure that the top level stuff looks all right. The links here work. You can see that it's resolving those relative links to the version on this branch. And then most of the linking we're doing though is from the, the new contributing file. So we're going to want to check all of these. Working link, working link. goes to installation, which is what we want. Linking to the unlicensed, CC0. legal section we created goes right to the bottom. Coding videos takes us to our correct playlist. Be sure to drop a like, subscribe, comment, helps our reach. And main YouTube channel. P2 
feature requests, bug reports, code contributions, documentation, art design and creative. Ooh, did I? There's a miss. That's forking the wrong project there. And let's go back where we were. Open an issue. That's our correct repo. Security. That works. Anchor link works. Project backlog, that is our correct backlog. Forking is still wrong. Coding standards, the link to Ruby on Rails, issue list for the correct item. Those are both static, but it should. Oh, watch out, autoplay. Okay. YouTube channel again. So, good commit message, instructions. Issue. Contributions. Correct issue. And before you start. So I see the one mistake there where, uh, let's see, see how our action did. The build worked. Uh, so we're going to go here and we're going to search for. just that one place that we missed. Everything else seems to be working fine. So what we'll do here is we'll do a git commit amend sign no edit to add my change first. Now I can run that. Get push and we'll do dash F to force push it. Go back off another build as we can see there and then if we go to the documentation contributing let's make sure that this links to contributing nerd dice there we go now fork the repository Dice. That's what we want. All right. So, provided that the build passes, and it has, we can now create a pull request. 
get this into master, master. It's going to rerun the build because it does that. I should probably change the configuration on that. Oh, yeah, let me make sure that the commit It is verified, so if that's what we want here, go into the, all right, checks of all past. We'll copy our branch name. Check out master. Push, delete my local branch. All right. And delete the remote branch. We can close this issue. Interesting. I've got a comment on this. to respond respectfully to this, but um, give me a moment here. All right, there we go. So I've got a, a response back on that. Kind of cool that um, a an offer to contribute comes in as I'm doing a video writing the uh, contribution section for this. So I'll just add that. Uh, comment replying and then we will note that it this was resolved by 42 close with that comment and then go back to the backlog and move our issue to done we'll see you in the next video Code along on an end-to-end -end journey through the creation, design, and development of a Ruby on Rails application for managing tabletop role-playing games. We start from Rails New and will guide you along the journey of the entire life cycle of the application. You'll get to see real-life, real-world problems and challenges as we try to deliver value for our users. Visit statelesscode.com to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.